Hey everybody, welcome to Pod Stallions. This is the October 30th episode, and it's almost Halloween. I'm Brian, and with me as always is Jason. Hello. I was, I was trying to do something spooky. That's not very spooky. That's like, like the big, big bopper. I was probably a big bopper. That was horrible. It'd be the ghost of the big bopper, I guess. I should, I'll do it. I'll try Good, I was gonna forget it. Forget it. I was going to do Good Evening. I was going to do Peter Lorre. Bunch you of different chose things. The big buffer. I chose for some reason it was either that or Richie Valens, just to commemorate their deaths. But uh, I'm way off on all of that. So never mind. Welcome to the show, everyone. I hope you're having a good spooky end of the month Halloween vibey kind of uh, time. Yeah, this is actually my favorite time of the year. I, I I'm a, I'm an autumn. I love fall, and I love monster movies, and that's all that's on TV right now. Well, I hope that at this point everyone is aware that we are completely gaga for Halloween. That's our favorite, our favorite holiday. Uh, your reasons, my reasons, monster movies, monsters in general, Mad Monster Party, monsters worth of candy, yes, mon- monster munch, the monster cereals. Are you sensing a theme yet? The smell of Ben Cooper Halloween costumes. How we vibe? Oh, I like that smell. Vi- isn't it a great smell? Yeah. I swear to God, it's better than bake, baking bread. Um, and um, you know what? It's non-denominational. Anyone can partake in Halloween. It's got nothing to do with anything but fun and scariness. And, of course, women sometimes dressing kind of sexy. But uh, really? most, <laughs> mostly it's the monster stuff and candy and classic horror movies. Let me, let me ask you something before we even get into this. If you had your druthers, now we did we did top ten scariest this and that, but would you like to curl up with a with a, a Butterfinger and um, a bowl of popcorn and some black and white monster movies, or would you like to curl up with the same kind of food, uh, but like Poltergeist and um, you know um, Beaches, yeah, and yeah. and uh, Clockwork Orange? No, I don't know. You know what I mean? Like more modern kind of. Stuff. I'm I'm actually in the middle. I like. Drive in trash. Um, the, the, those are my like the Mad Doctor of Blood Island, um, Paul Nashi werewolf movies. Th- th- like that's the kind of stuff I dig, and I you know I've I've mentioned that before. So, but I I, I love Hammer. We should do a Hammer episode. Um, I love Universal, but I I tend to like my films. I tend to be more of a junk food type. You know. Oh. Explain, please. Well, like, all this month on AMC has been a lot of horror movies, and, and my God, there was a Leprechaun marathon on the other day. A Leprechaun! Yeah, that's all I know. Um, <laughs> I have no interest in any of that. Um, I, no, I, I don't care about Jason or Freddy, um, but I do kind of like shock and exploitation movies. Oh, okay. Yeah. So you mean like... You mean like Last House on the Left and I Spit on Your Grave kind of? Uh, those are a little uh, – I don't hate them, but I, they're not my favorites. I, I Like I said, I like Filipino monster movies, um, which oh, I, okay. have, I have a whole cabinet of. Uh, most of them have John Ashley in them for some reason. I love uh, the European stuff by Paul Nashi. He did a whole series where he played El Hombre Lobo. And, uh, you know, uh, our topic tonight, I, I love um, Japanese monster movies. Is that our topic tonight? It's Godzilla. Yes. Yes. Wait. What have the we, Japanese? What have the Japanese got to do with monster movies? Nothing. Nothing at all. <laughs> Good night, everybody. Good night. Da, 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 da. Um, yeah. Uh, here's here's the, a the reason. I know I, you I mean, asked me before we started taping. Well, yes, is Godzilla yes, a yes. Halloween topic? Yes. And I said, yeah, because when I was a kid, and I didn't explain this to you. I just said yes. But when I was a kid, we'd have a monster <laughs> mash uh, week on Channel 2 in Buffalo. Okay. And three out of the five movies would be Toho movies. They'd be like Frankenstein Conquers the World, Godzilla, you know, uh, they, 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 Godzilla, Reptilicus. Like, it, they, they all, it's all a welcome bag for me. Well, uh, but, but uh, okay, so so you're, you're, okay. We're getting into an area here, folks, just so you're paying attention, uh, where either Brian and I are having some kind of early... Uh, Pod Stallions related dementia, or we've already done so many of these 
we've kind of forgotten the the bags we've sort of dipped into. So I know we've talked about Godzilla before, but but Japanese you, toys was and Japanese awesome. Japanese toys. But so your love of Godzilla really did. I mean, our, I think you love Godzilla and those monsters. I dig Godzilla and those monster movies, but you know them much better than I do. But but both of us can say we were kids, and it th- these these things ran on. On so did it only run during that sort of monster mash? No, I think they ran at different times during the year, but that was like a concentrated burst. You know, uh, you could get two Godzilla movies in a week, and that was crazy. You know, um, when I got older, they played them every Saturday on Buffalo Twenty Nine, which was fantastic. Uh, uh, but they, they say a double bill kind of thing. No, every week they used to. Oh, what I'm saying is, there a couple of stations used to play like a creature feature all week during the week of Halloween. Mm-hmm. And some crazy stuff would get out, you know, some stuff you never saw before, like Frankenstein conquers the world, War of the Gargantuas, Godzilla versus the Thing, uh, Godzilla's Revenge, things like that. So, they're to me, they're part and parcel with Halloween. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Okay, that, that's interesting because I, for me, it's more like uh, it's more like that Godzilla was kind of perennial. I mean, for me, it was more like a Saturday afternoon thing. Yeah, that that oh, happened later it. for me, and maybe okay, that's just okay. mileage varies for where you live, right? Okay, got it, got yeah. it. Like, I mean, I can remember second grade, my mother's birthday, and when I was crossing with the crossing guard, a kid said, you better get home. Godzilla versus The Thing is starting. Ooh. And I, I remember thinking, I, I first of all, I had this mental image of... Godzilla fighting James Arness or Ben Grimm. Oh you know, yeah, because I, I didn't it? know who the th- like which thing was it and and uh, what was it? It's Mothra. Oh, and, and case in point, just last weekend at a toy show, I found the Super Eight of Godzilla versus the Thing, Ooh. and it was like nostalgia overload. You know, whoosh, right in the coat. Um, wow, it wasn't expensive, but. The um, wait, Super Eight, but you, and does it? Or can you watch it? Kind of I thing. Have a Super Eight projector, sir. Yes, nice. Yes. Um, which my kids are fascinated with, but it'll take them. Like I could just go look it up on YouTube. I'm sure some kind souls done that, but it it's the whole journey, right? Um, <laughs> so that began. Like I, I think children are nece- are fixated with Godzilla right away. He appeals to kids. Uh, okay. You agree, because I love dinosaurs yes. as a kid. Godzilla's a big dinosaur. He blows up cities. He fights other monsters. Yep. It's just written for children, in my opinion. I think it's. I think it's a combination. He's. He's. He's got that odd combination that didn't change for a long time. And again, I'm not. I am no expert on these films, but I would say. The basic facial design was probably the same from original through the '60s, almost. No, actually, did it? Well, I mean, you know what I'm saying with the big eyes and like the and the the big the sort of mouth. It, it's kind of a cuter look rather than an angry. Well, no, the first the first film, the one with well, the one they they added Raymond Burr to right. the American version with Raymond Burr. Yeah, right. he's very he's very different looking in that. He, he's okay. It's, so besides it's a that, darker, one. more adult film. And I think he looks the same in the sequel, which was known as Gigantus the Fire Monster here, or it's been retitled Godzilla Raids Again in later years. He's still that look. As I recall, and I could be wrong, and call me to task, what the people at Toho realized was that the Gamera movies were doing real good, and the Gamera movies appealed to kids a little more than the Godzilla movies, so they softened Godzilla in the 60s. Um... Can you – okay, here's what's going to have to happen along the way is um, remind us – Gamera is the turtle one, right? <laughs> Gamera is the flying – because you know turtles fly. Yeah. The giant flying turtle that <laughs> – you know, hit movies have become I think a mystery <laughs> science theater classic. And Yeah, can you do the song? I can, but I'm not oh, going to. Cause... Are we going to get in trouble with licensing? I don't think so. I, I... Can, you, can you hum a few bars? No. Come on. Um, you know, nobody wants to hear me sing. That's that. You know what, people? Write in if you don't want to hear. Write in, yes. Write to our uh, P.O. box. Write to our P.O. box. Guy, Guy Caballero. <laughs> care of send eighty five <laughs> for your 3D glasses. Um, <laughs> no, I, uh, I am a huge uh, – I'm not a huge fan of, of Gamera. I, I like his movies, but um, – 
I do kind of like that goofy Godzilla. Like, uh, I think w- when they brought Godzilla back in 1984 and added mm-hmm. Raymond Burr again, um, <laughs> they kind of wanted to pretend like all that crap in the middle didn't happen. But personally, like, those are some of my favorites. I really do like 60s and 70s Godzilla movies. I, As I get older, and this is a phenom that kind of bugs me, but I've told this to friends of mine who are Godzilla fans, I could care less about the people stories. And I think that's the challenge of making a Godzilla movie, is making the people interesting. Um, okay. But I think... Uh, I, I do I do kind of just dig that whole retro future thing they were doing and, and just just uh, how fun those films are, really. Uh, okay, so two quick questions. One is, um, do you think when you when you go back to those those you know perennials that were always on, you know, and the you know what is the is the audience kids is the audience kids that then grew up to be teens and they're finding you know some adult stuff in there there's some romance there are certain faces that adults will kind of recognize in american television that made their way into into films and japanese you know stars etc and then there's the goofiness there's the goofy factor that you know when when godzilla does that thing where he does the the uh, curly joe you know he's you know doing his face you know, like doing the wah, 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 that whole thing. Is that meant to be totally goofy? Because or he does the whole jumping, and he just—it's—it's it's beautiful. I love it. I'll, I could watch it all day. But was it meant initially to get laughs the way they were fighting, or was it meant like this is this is as serious as a heart attack kind of stuff? Yeah, I think I think the one you're talking about there because it's the most famous Godzilla movie that uh, like it's is Godzilla versus Megalon. Which okay. was released here around 1977, um, and it was it was competing with King Kong, so they put um, Godzilla and Megalon on the World Trade Towers for the poster. Oh. And um, but I think it's older. I think Godzilla versus Megalon is like two, three years older. It, it's and it's not great. Um, it, it's okay. pretty goofy. Mystery Science Theater bagged on it pretty successfully. Uh, it was one of those films that, like, it's sort of fallen in public domain, but not really, because you can't okay. you you can't market it. But when when VHS came out, it was in every dollar VHS bin, you know, with a bad cover. And um, I don't think you could put Godzilla on the cover. So there's a lot of really bad bootlegs of Godzilla versus Megalon. And it is, rightfully, it's pretty bad. But I think, you know, the heyday of Godzilla would have to be the the mid to late 60s when you had stuff like Monster Zero, Godzilla vs. Ghidorah, um, Destroy All Monsters, which is, you know, a highlight for every kid. It's it's, it's Monster Island. I mean, that's where they all hung out. It's like Island of Misfit Toys, right? Yeah. Yeah, and, and and coincidentally, there was a movie released here. I think the one of the last Godzilla movies released here was uh, I can remember it. Godzilla on Monster Island, and he's on Monster Island for about ten seconds in that movie. <laughs> it's it's <laughs> like absolutely one of the lowest points. It's one of my least favorites. Um, is that the um, is that the one with the the little one that blows smoke rings? No, uh, Minya, uh, his son, is in... Um, is it really his son? Did, did the blood test come back? I mean, is it really his kid? Do uh, we know did that you see sure? that, Maury? I'm just saying, he get, you know, God, look, I think it's safe enough. It's been enough time to, that's passed. Godzilla, he got around. I mean, yeah. he, he didn't just... He wasn't, you know, you're in the... God knows what he did down in the ocean. Or who. Whom. I, I'm uh, really not sure how, how it is. I don't know why a baby Godzilla looks more like Poppin' Fresh. And I think a lot of people don't. Though this, that's though that I think there's a. This was the '70s, you know. Yeah. This was the '70s when no, everyone was, was '60s. '60s. Everyone was experimenting. There were all kinds of new drugs on the market, and it's you know they used to say they used to say you're pulling a pop and fresh. That was that was slang back then, and now we know probably why. It could have been that something happened between Gojira and Pop and Fresh, resulting in what was his name? <laughs> Chip. What was the kid's name? Minya. Minya. Yeah. Close. Yeah. That was close. Yeah. Who knows? But uh, the second question is, which is the one that starred uh, a guest star, co-star, was Johnny Yuma? Um, uh, what's Nick his Adams. name? Nick Adams. 
Nick Adams. Yeah, Nick Adams is in two. Uh, he's in Monster Zero. Yep. Which is uh, a film I recently watched and I quite like. With the awesome alien wardrobes, right? Yeah, yeah, they are. Uh, in fact, your friend and mine there, uh, uh, Joe Senna from MC Toys, he uses that as his avatar. Oh, right on. Well, they got those badass Ramon sunglasses. Yeah, and I remember yep. when I was watching it, the first thing I thought was, and I told him this, I said, oh, Joe Senna. And it's like, oh, no, give me a break. Um, <laughs> but... <laughs> Uh, yeah, th- th- that's that. He's in that film, and then he's in Frankenstein Conquers the World, and then I think he uh, he of course uh, returned to the USA and and uh, and, uh, ended and killed his himself. Life. Yeah, yeah. Um, let's let's be. He killed himself. I mean, it's it's you know. Killed there himself. was actually this is a weird sidebar, but I used to read Psychotronic magazine. Uh huh. And I, I still would if Psychotronic Magazine was still a thing, but he he burned out a while ago. And um, there used to be an ad in the back where a guy was selling original songs, and one of the one of the ads was he had an album dedicated to Nick Adams, and I guess what? this doomed love affair he had in Japan. While really? filming the Godzilla movies, and I was always like, what a weirdly obscure thing to write a record about. And, you know, like, how many people are this curious? Like, I was curious, but not put money in an envelope curious. Um, Wow. Yeah. Uh, But, you know what, I was, um, I I love Frankenstein Conquers the World, but that's not really Godzilla. But, yeah, Nick Adams. And then I think in the sequel, they got Russ Tamblin to play the Nick Adams character. for Russ Tamblin, who became, well, well, he was in West Side Story. Yep. He became better known as uh, Dr. David Cross's father-in-law. Who? David Cross's father-in-law. David Cross's father. He's David. David Cross. Who's David Cross? David Cross. Show Arrested Development. David Cross is married to Amber Tamblin. Yeah, I believe so. Is he really? Yeah. Oh, David Cross. Okay, I'm, I'm like, I thought you were saying a character name. I'm like, wait a second. Okay. But also, he was uh, Dr. Uh, blah, blah on uh, Twin Peaks. Yeah. Dr. Tongue. He's also in, um, he's also in Dracula vs. Frankenstein. Now, okay, so, so Nick Adams, did he kill himself because of the Godzilla movies or because no, of the Japanese? No, no, no. Yeah, I, th- I think that would very much be depression and alcoholism. Can you uh, can you sing the Johnny Yuma theme? I cannot. I have never seen an episode of Johnny Yuma. I can sing it. All right then. I could go get another beer. <laughs> <laughs> Forget. You know what? I was I was all ready to give a couple of lines, but you won't do Gamera, and I just I somehow don't have it in me to uh, sing Johnny Yuma. Uh-huh. The great Johnny, the great Johnny Cash did uh, Johnny Yuma. I have never yeah. seen that show. Um. Now. Now. Now, okay, so so here's a question. Two questions. Again, all of my questions will be two part questions. Uh-huh. The first part is, did you start what? As far as Godzilla uh, merchandise went, yes. When, when do you reckon that sort of kicked off? Like, what what film or what year sort of did suddenly the market go? Ooh, we should make. Was it the '60s? Was there was there Godzilla stuff in the '60s, like mid '60s? The first, kind of? the fr- like, I mean, in Japan, it's a different story, right? And I, yeah. I am not an expert on all Japan. things Japan. Yeah. Yeah. The yeah. first thing I can think of that came out Godzilla related in the United States would be the Aurora model kit, and that was huge because you know Aurora was doing real film classics here, you know Frankenstein, The Wolfman, <laughs> Mummy, Dracula, and the King Kong, which of course has been a staple of television for years. And then they they do Godzilla in the in the mid '60s, which means that, you know he had it made as an icon, you know. It, um, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And um, I think there was a '60s Godzilla game. Okay. And I think it's quite dear. I think somebody I know owns it. And then, you know, there was some there was some sp- some model kits, and of course the films got released by those you know those Super Eight companies. Then I think all hell broke loose in the mid to late seventies. I think that was a real great time to be a Godzilla uh, fan, and that's when we were kids. Mm-hmm. When you know Mattel got on board by releasing, which is probably the 
the greatest 70s Godzilla toy, which is the Shogun Warriors Godzilla in 70, I think 78. Which was, which was, um, now was that, that was, okay, in America it came out of Shogun, was it Shogun, was that the line in, in Japan? Machin, before? Mach, Jumbo Machinders. Jumbo Machinders, But okay. what I've been told by people smarter than me is, they did not, they came out at the same time. Uh, Popey developed their own. And Mattel developed their own, and I've I've got both here. And um, the Pope How one could is anyone be smarter than you? Oh, there's lots of people. What I don't know can fill a warehouse. Um, the 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 Japanese guy, like it looks like. Okay, so for those of us that maybe aren't quite as familiar with the world of Godzilla, so what, what's the what's the big difference between the Shogun Warrior uh, Godzilla and the Popey? Godzilla that came out in Japan. Okay. Um, well, for one thing, the the Mattel one is a lot more rounder and safer. Um, the, the 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 Japanese one has um, it's 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 more movie accurate. It looks more like the movie Godzilla. Okay. And it has you know the big tail spikes and the the back spines. Uh, it does. They both have the shooting fist, which is which is strange, and the wheels for their feet. Mm-hmm. But instead of the flicking tongue. This one talks, and I actually have it here, so I'll pull the string. Hang on. Okay, that's that's not it. Okay, it's not going to say it's not going. It to sounds like he's shooting. Does he have a revolver? Yeah, they're shooting. Yeah, I guess he's supposed to come with a revolver. I don't know. <laughs> Let's try one more time. Oh, this is like when you pull a talking GI Joe, and he just keeps saying, "I have a tough assignment for you." That's just what I was going to say. There you go. Yeah, I heard something. Yeah, you know I don't want to keep pulling that string because one day it's not going to pull. But um, so, so, that's, a, that's actually a metaphor for life. It actually. is. Yes. But let me ask you this: this is this is and this is a tiny bit of a side side bar here, or whatever. Mm-hmm. You know the thing like the like the the shooting fist. Like everyone listening knows, like well, Godzilla's fist never shot off across the the room, but because it's. A, a, of Japanese origin, it's a toy of Japanese origin. We all kind of go, oh yeah, that kind of makes sense because they, you know, they had fists shoot up. Like I used to have the Takara R two D two diecast, the three PO, and the Vader, which really were just like their torsos were diecast. But they, but you know, three PO had a missile that shot out of his chest. Yeah, R two had silver missiles that shot out of they his. They were dome. weaponized, and, and you know, I would like to have seen a Star Wars movie where that happened. <laughs> I, I agree. I'd rather see three PO yeah. finally, finally get get his by shooting somebody in the in the face with his chest missile. Uh, <laughs> Vader Vader had a weird thing too. But like, is that what is? is does that come from some? Is that does that come from the whole giant robot thing? Yeah, where, I, I, like I I'm not a hundred percent of as to its origins, but you know, um, in in America, Godzilla was marketed under the Shogun Warriors brand. And I think in Japan it was marketed under its, you know, its, its original name, which was uh, Jumbo Machinder, and that was like a trademark of the Jumbo Machinder was like the firing missile hand, right? And I, I think it's an important play value, and you know, it, it's one of those things that sure it doesn't make a lick of sense. I mean, Godzilla's not a robot, and he needs his hand, but who cares? It's fun, and um, I love it. I yeah, mean, I- me too. And and I mean, I. That was one of those things I tracked down very early on was Godzilla. And then Mattel released Rodan, but Japan did not. So, uh, Oh, that's interesting. Yeah, so, it is. I and, that. and that's, I think, why Rodan's so valuable is the fact that <gasps> Japanese collectors are after him, too. He's not released under the Shogun Warriors brand for some reason. He's released under, like, the, I can't remember the branding, but it's like Super Monsters or something. Oh, interesting. I did not uh, – I don't think I knew that Road – I just assumed that he was – A Shogun warrior. Yeah, yeah. and he never, he never came out in Japan, huh? No. That's interesting. And I just got one. You just got one just recently? Yeah, I had one in high school, but I, I just recently got one loose. and I'm... So without, uh, without having to reveal uh, too much, none of our business um, – what uh, what what would something like the Rodan like in packaging run uh, your average Joe? Yeah, you know, a few years ago I had a Rodan in the box, and I think I got him for three hundred and fifty dollars. 
and um, it was a s- sad circumstance the way I got them because it was some. It was uh, the the Rodan uh, without getting too detailed. What would uh, something like that run your average Joe if you wanted to track one down? Uh, I w- I would probably say um, a lot. <laughs> um, I used to have a box one about seven or eight years ago. I paid like three fifty four hundred. It was a bereavement issue. Um, something about it being in the box just didn't work for me, and I sold it. I think for four or five hundred dollars. Um, wait, wait, wait. Sorry, you got one in the box, and you didn't want to hang on to a boxed Rodan. No, there was something, and this is weird, and this is very rare of me because I like boxes, I like package toys, but. That was such a fun toy, and to have it just shoved in a box meant it was just... I, I, I can't explain it. It just didn't seem fun. Was it sealed? No. Um, it, it looked like it was someone's childhood toy, and it had been very well taken care of. Oh, okay. And um, it, it just didn't work, yet... You know, I had a loose one in high school, and, and I, I just recently bought a loose one because I, I, it's a great thing to hang from the ceiling. Like, it's okay. an amazing toy to hang from the ceiling. And um, I'm very fond of Rodan. My daughter loves Rodan. It's it's just one of those Rodan. things. But um, we're getting, you know, we, we were talking a bit about the 70s explosion of, of Godzilla. And there was, a, like, a plethora of amazing licensed products available to the late 70s kid. Um, Mattel did an amazing Godzilla game. You seen that? I don't think so. Like this is not like animated series specific. You no, mean? No, it's it's all I'm like sure. it, it. There isn't very much, um, and we'll get to the animated series. It really isn't much based on the Hanna Barbera series. I think Imperial Toys did some some stickers, some puffy stickers that show the characters of the Godzilla television show. Okay, and Knickerbocker, and I had one of these. Did plush um, Godzilla. And Godzuki from the series. Wow, those have got to be like gold dust, huh? Those two- um, yeah, I mean, I still have my Godzilla, and my daughter actually, uh, when she learned how to sew, fixed him because he was starting to get a seam. Wait, what about Godzuki? I don't own a Godzuki. Um, Godzuki you got, you got is pictures of these. Oh, pardon? Yeah, I got pictures of the displays. Even. Oh, you got to put these up. Yeah, man. I definitely will. Um, yeah, I'm, Godzuki is not my favorite in in the world he's, no he's, he's not well but... well below scrappy doo or yeah. uh cousin oliver or any of that sort of oh, stuff see, no, see I, I don't uh i don't know about that the three of them <laughs> can only <laughs> save one of them in a burning bus about to go over the cliff i'd grab godzuki oh me too yeah, I, I would because Scrappy Doo doesn't shut up. No, no, no. That's what I'm trying to say is he doesn't annoy the crap out of oh, me like the. Oh, I'm other. sorry. I thought yeah. you were saying he was beneath. Uh, oh no! Yeah, beneath him in terms of um, your level uh, the of top hate. of the the top of the pyramid is hatred. Gotcha. And I got gotcha. you. You know, uh, Godzuki. Like I'm, I, I I loved the Godzilla cartoon when I was a kid, but it really doesn't have a lot to do with Godzilla. And, no, but see, you just. I'm sorry to be this guy. You just kind of, for me, described why I don't love the Godzilla movies the way a lot of people do, is there's never enough Godzilla in them. There's never enough. I don't really care about the little alien women that want to kidnap this guy or kill the old man or, you know, Johnny Yuma, you know, uh, having to make out with someone on a spaceship. I want to just get to Godzilla fighting a monster or... But you can't watch that for two hours. Oh, I, oh, I could watch that for two hours. I could watch really? it for three hours. Yeah. Well, no. Okay. Let's say it's a two-hour thing. I could, I could still watch that for 90 minutes. I just – when you start breaking down how much of these films are concentrated, even the new one. Like even the, the new one for me came alive when Godzilla was on screen and especially when he lit up. Because when he lit up, at that point, we hadn't seen it. And I actually forgot – that that's what happens when oh Godzilla that was that up. was magical and, that and was magical the you know I understand what you're saying I, I think um, I think the the real and we we should probably go through a list of Godzilla's films and, and talk about our favorites and least favorites but when I think of when I think of of Godzilla films my favorites are the ones where the 
people running on the ground story is interesting. And my least favorite ones are the <laughs> ones where I don't give a crap about any of them. And I think that's really funny that, that you bring that up is, is you're like, I don't want any of it. Um, that's interesting. Yeah, because, um, you know, you go through the list and the first film, Godzilla, they really try hard mm-hmm. with that. And especially even the American version, they, they, they amazingly, when you look at how they put Raymond Burr into that film, it's pretty well done. And... Um, and and of course Godzilla's a bad guy in that one, so it's more of a typical uh, menace. Film. How many? Can we just clear the decks here? Yeah. No, of, of the of the however many dozens of Godzilla movies that have been made, what's the percentage that he's basically a bad guy or kind of ambiguous? And then what's the percentage that he's clearly the hero, the good guy? You know what? His heel turn stopped pretty quickly. In I think I think he did about three or four films like the sequel. He's a bad guy. Godzilla raids again, or it's called Gigantus the Fire Monster, King Kong versus Godzilla. <laughs> it's it's clearly uh, Godzilla's the bad guy in that one, right? And then Mothra or Godzilla versus the Thing, Godzilla versus Mothra. He wants to eat that egg, so you're kind of rooting for Mothra, right? And then when it the script flips um, for Ghidra the three-headed monster, because mm-hmm. all of a sudden Ghidra's the bad guy, and Godzilla and Mothra have somehow made friends, and Rodan, so they kind of all um, they kind of all team up to beat up Ghidra. So, from what I've heard, the, um, the, the heel turn was largely inspired... Well, sorry, not the heel turn, but the good guy turn was largely inspired by Gamera... Am I got that okay. right? I, I don't know. No, I'm wrong. I'm absolutely wrong. Um, Godzilla Godzilla made uh, the good guy turn before Gamera even came around. What happened was the Godzilla movies were influenced by Gamera in that they became more uh, less mature by the late 60s because the Gamera movies were selling to kids. And, and the Gamera movies are very juvenile. So all of a sudden, the Godzilla movies got pretty silly mm-hmm. in the late '60s. Now, mind you, everything got pretty silly in the late '60s. That's true, uh, especially those hippies. <laughs> so, yeah, I would say Godzilla turned good in 1964 with Ghidra, the three-headed monster. Guess what that's about? And um, then, is it about Watergate? Yes, Watergate, which hadn't happened yet. Right. It was. It was. They were. They were. They were talismans. Yes. To Watergate. And then uh, the next year they had Monster Zero, which was um, pretty much a repeat of Ghidorah, except you had, uh, I believe, aliens and Johnny Human, Nick Adams. Johnny Yuma was a rebel. Never seen it. Just that's the Johnny Cash song. Oh, okay. He rode through the west. There you go. Nick Adams, of course, uh, did, I think, two films for Toho, uh, Monster Zero and Frankenstein Conquers the World. And then killed himself. Yes. Coincidence? Maybe not. Alcoholism? Depression? Possibly. Perhaps. But which came first, the alcoholism or the Gojira movies? Uh, They probably were in tandem. Yeah, and fair enough. This is one of the things I've always—I—I I, I have to bring it up because it, it makes it always makes me wonder. Is back in the pages of Psychotronic ma- magazine in the early '90s, there was yes. a guy selling his records of his, you know, his songs, and yes. he apparently had a whole album dedicated to the dick, the doomed love affair of Nick Adams and a um, Japanese actress. Oh, that he probably met on a Gojira movie. Yeah, and it was like. Wow, that's a really interesting topic of an album. Yeah, and it's quite. It's yeah, you know, it's I, no dark. It's no dark side of the moon. But yeah, I was really curious to, as to what that sounded like. <laughs> you know, I would have thought you you would have tracked that down by now, just to kind of so so little time. I know, uh, I know. You're, it's true. Each week, some <laughs> I discover a movie I've never heard of. So. You know, <laughs> and I'm very distracted, easily distracted. I know, yeah. as, as our episodes can attest. Yes, yes. Um, so, okay, so wait a second. So Nick Adams, blah, 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 
This okay. Now let's get back to the cartoon real quick because uh, we're talking about merchandise. Was there? You know, I first of all was that a filmation show? I think no, it, it was Hanna Barbera. It was Hanna Barbera. Because what I was going to say was, you know, all those damn shows, filmation, Hanna Barbera, they all threw in a scrappy do at some point. Even my beloved filmation Flash Gordon animated series. Yes. By the second the second season. They had to do away with the chapters because that confused too many uh, networks for syndication, uh, and they had to do standalone. So there were two like eight minute things in each in each episode, two different things in a, in a half hour. But they brought in this little pink dragon called Gremlin, which from certain angles looks an awful lot like uh, a pink version of, of uh, Godzuki. Wait, Godzuki or Gadzuki? God's Godzuki. Godzuki. And I know that the voice of Gremlin was done by Lou Scheimer. He made all the little twerps. Lou and- Scheimer did a lot of those twerpy voices. And then I that's why I thought, oh, I wonder if Godzilla is the same company and perhaps he did the voice as well. But no, that's not the case, is it? No. Um, no. Godzuki was done by Don Messick. Oh, good old Don Messick. And so, Ted what, what, Cassidy did Godzilla because for some unknown reason that I've never been able to toy, they weren't allowed to use the roar. Oh, that's interesting. Yeah. Really? They could use the name and the design, but they couldn't use the roar. So what I was going to get to was, was there a glut of, especially you'd know this, the time frame, animated series, Godzilla, and rack toys. Was there like a glut of rack toys done? I, I picture like awesome squirt guns or dart guns or little mini play sets uh, all on a card that I can go look for now because you're going to tell me that they existed. But maybe they, they didn't. They didn't, but I will say the greatest Godzilla rack toy of the late 70s would be uh, GLJ, which is a company you don't hear a lot about. Um, they produced a little bendy of Godzilla. And they did this wonderful card art. I think it's in Rack Toys. Oh yeah, uh, of Godzilla, and they, you know, they could have just drawn him or used a poster, but instead they, they, you know, they smashed a little diorama with like trains and that sort of thing, and they have that bendy on the card, and it's just, it's just wonderful. Um, I mentioned the stickers. There wasn't, there wasn't a lot of, uh, if anything, Hanna Barbera related. Uh, but Godzilla was, you know, pretty sewn up to like Mattel, who also released a, a line of toys at that time, which would be considered rack toys, but not really. It was called Godzilla's Gang, and these were pulpy vinyls. And in fact, I think even the feet have Japanese writing. And it's it's of Godzilla, and then the six other characters in Godzilla's Gangs are actually like Ultraman and Ultra Seven villains. Oh, that's interesting. Yeah, they did. You know, they just. That, they're all Godzilla's gang, even though they really aren't. Um, so th- they had that going on. And around that time, um, HG Toys released one of my favorite Godzilla toys of all time. And this is something I remember seeing in the back of Famous Monsters and thinking, how do I get this old toy? Um, it's called Godzilla vs. the Trisophilon. And again, it's another thing where they license Godzilla, but they couldn't license another monster. I, I don't know how Toho works, but I think they're pretty, uh, pretty expensive. So they created another monster that looks a lot like Ghidra, and they call, it's a town, and it's you know it's got built, it's got a, a a mat that looks like city streets, and then you it comes with a boat and the army and uh, people running away and soldiers and planes. And basically, it's like the grooviest little Green Army Men playset you ever saw in your life. Awesome. Yes. There was even an old lady waving her cane. At, you know, I guess you're supposed to put that in front of the monsters. Well, everyone knows that a monster will stop for a, a senior citizen with a, with a cane. Of course. It's, they're they're but, just, but, um, just you like you and me. Isn't that interesting, though? Like, you would, you would think if anything was screaming out for play sets with little tanks and little army men, that it would be the series of Godzilla movies that you would, you would think there were literally dozens upon dozens of such play sets to choose from because it would just seem like, you know, just add water to, to that. Even the new movie, I forget who did the toys for that, but they put out a couple little little box sets where it was like... Oh, it was really hard 
not to buy that stuff. Yeah, Godzilla and the other monster, and they're like little little skyscrapers that yeah. broke in half. If and they were just a little less clunky, I would have like they they just they look so those skyscrapers just look so cheap. But if there was just a little more care in there, because like I don't know if you remember, they did an Ultraman TV series here in the early nineties. Oh and, yeah, and they it made, kind of flopped, I... and they made these amazing toys for yeah. Us. And one of the things they came out with was the Ultraman Smash and Thrash City playset, which again was like a plastic mat and buildings that fell apart. And okay. I loved that thing. I thought it was amazing. Well, didn't they do? Wait a minute. I remember these because they the the Ultraman the figures. It was I think they were made by Bandai, and Those they came. Ones? No. What? I can't remember the name of the company. I thought it was Bandai. But anyway, so it was they came in but the creatures came in boxes. Huge boxes. Huge boxes. The creatures were were pretty cool. I'd have to look this up. But wasn't there also like a ship? Yep. Or did you just say that? I no, I didn't, but the, you're right. Um what was Ultraman Towards the Future was the name of that show and it just didn't really get proper syndication so these toys were on Toys R Us shelves and yeah. kids didn't know what they were I didn't know where they I was suddenly going oh my god this where did this you know like I remember once being at a Target store like in the early 80s maybe or something and you know you know the you know the Japanese I think I'm going to get it wrong but it's called Macross Macross yeah Macross like I'd only seen such things like in catalogs, like like you know some of those things that you and I would mail away for, and it was like all Japanese toys or model kits or things like that. And suddenly there was like this set of four vinyl f- figures from that show with Japanese packaging, like on, the, on an end cap at Target. Well, I think when the That's Transformers terrible. thing happened, everybody just scrambled to get robots because I remember I worked in a, a toy store at that time and we were just getting these shipments from China, you know, over from Hong Kong and they were all, you know, from some animated show. And I, I, you know, I figured out half of them were Gundams now, but yeah, well, I used to love the Gundam stuff. Yeah. Yeah. The what you know, the Gundam, the, 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 the white one, the white one that everybody knows. Yeah, I know. Yeah. Love that dude. Um, okay. So there wasn't a ton of, wasn't a ton of Godzuki, st- I mean, uh, animated Godzilla stuff like rack toys and stuff like that. No, it's, it's, you'd think it would scream to. Uh, uh, Imperial Toys got the license in the late 80s and really went to town with the rack toys. And, of course, that they produced that rubber Godzilla that everyone seems to own. Mm-hmm. Um, and they, they really did kind of take full advantage. They did inflatable Godzillas. But that wasn't until about, like, 86 or 87. So that was, like, another wave of Godzilla mania, you know? Okay. But, I mean, going back to the film franchise, uh, by the mid-60s, I think they were pretty much rolling out one a year. And uh, they were getting a little silly, like Son of Godzilla introduced Minya that little Pillsbury Doughboy. Oh, yeah. Yeah, and then um, we have... He smoke rings, right? He blew smoke rings. And then we got Destroy All Monsters, which was that movie that kids talked about on the playground, you know? Like, you've seen the one with all the monsters? And it was kind of legendary. Everybody was in that. Yeah. And and I can remember... um, I can honestly remember... Uh, like racing home from probably like church or something because somebody told me it was like on at one, you know, Um, because it was, you know, it was huge. It was epic and you couldn't miss it. And then I think, I think it's 1969. They came out with all monsters attack, which is really, it's also called Godzilla's revenge. And if I'm not mistaken, it's the one geared to kids. And it's it's um, it's the one where Godzilla's son talks, and it's largely thought of as a bit of an embarrassment. I don't know if it's a success or not, but you know Godzilla kept coming. So I don't remember him talking. Yeah, it's the goofiest one. It's it's like a little kid's fantasy. Hmm. And um, I've honestly never sat through it all. I accidentally bought it in New York City the last time I was there. Because the wife and I are walking through a subway station, and as we walk down the tunnel to get to our next train, there's a video and music store. 
just you know wall to wall DVDs, and I can see signs mm-hmm. that say Kung Fu, Godzilla, and I'm like, I gotta go in here. You know, mm-hmm. and she humored me, and uh, but I also didn't want to spend all day in there. And I was going through the Godzilla movies, and they come under so many titles, and you know, I'm still the I'm still kind of stuck in that that mindset of um, going by the titles I knew as a kid, and I accidentally bought the wrong title or the wrong Godzilla movie. But I figured it's something my daughter and I would watch, so who cares? I'm sure you're not the first man that bought the wrong Godzilla movie. I'm sure. I'm, they can be a little difficult to... Uh, well, you know, I should have gone for the next one, which is one I like, called Godzilla vs. the Smog Monster, which came out in 71. And it's a little more serious. Um, Godzilla is fighting pollution, basically. And it's a... Really? Yeah. I didn't realize he was so... Um, I didn't realize he was so... Environmentally conscious. Well, he's environmentally conscious for Godzilla. Pollution, pollution manifests itself as something he can hit. But I mean, doesn't he? I mean, it's it's ironic. It's slightly ironic because he spends an awful lot of time destroying stuff. You know, like the 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 city, the what they must go through, and the taxes probably get raised every year mm-hmm. because of the shit he pulls. Uh, and yet he wants to preach about the smog. I mean, slightly hypocritical, don't slightly you think? Hypocritical, but just a little. You tell him. Um, and in 73, Godzilla vs. Megalon came out. Godzilla vs. Megalon is, is absolutely a disaster, but it's one of my favorites. It's the one with Jet Jaguar. I love Jet Jaguar! And we didn't get that here until like was he 70, a robot? 76. Was he was he, he a was an Ultraman, Inframan ripoff. <laughs> so he was, but was he, so he was, he was a, a robot. Yeah. He was a robot, okay. Yeah. But he Who wasn't. Semaphore. <laughs> He did semaphore, and he – boy, what a design though, huh? Do you know who, who's responsible for that design? No, but I, God, I, love I don't Jet either, Jaguar. but what a great – that's just like – everybody knows that Jet Jaguar. Like and people don't even know it. They go – when you show them, they go, oh, I love that dude. Like yeah. I don't even know what he did, but I love that dude. Uh, he and, can grow uh, really big. Yeah, but he's, his coloring, man, he's got great coloring. Yeah, and, and um, the, the back story is kind of hilarious in that one. Um, I think it's basically like an Atlantis-like continent, and it's the scientist and his buddy. And the scientist, of course, creates Jet Jaguar, who summons Godzilla and um, Anguirus, I think. And the, they fight uh, Gigan, and as I recall, it gets pretty wrestling-oriented, you know. The, the pretty No. Yeah. Oh, I skipped Wait, one. I skipped one. Godzilla... Versus Gigan, which came out in seventy two. I, I it, that one's really bad, and it was released here in seventy nine as Godzilla on Monster Island. Do you remember that one? That's the one with the cockroach people. I remember the title mo- on Monster Island, but he's not on Monster Island. He doesn't spend any time on Monster Island. I remember Godzilla on Fire Island. That was yes, a very yeah. different. That's very a, that, different. that one gets a little blue. Adults yeah. only. Of not what I expected when I rented it. It has you questioning things. It had me question many things, including uh, Gojira and why he would holiday in such a place. I grew up when he's gone. Um, (laughs) Um, But wait a second. You just said something about something. I did. Yeah. You said – yeah. No, but you said um, Godzilla versus who? What was it? Well, the, uh, you know what? I, I went all over the place. There was Godzilla versus – So let me ask you this. So we know that – we know that uh, Gamera had a song, right? Yes, yes. Did Mothra have a song? Did Rodan have a song? Well, Did- I think Mothra had a song in that those two little girls would sing a song to bring. That's her, right. You know, rather than yeah, I, 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 but I can't repeat that song. And by the way, was Mothra, Mothra, as the caterpillar and as the big giant Mothra? Or was he just Mothra when he changed into the the big giant moth? Shut up. That's why. <laughs> I don't know. I'm asking. I don't know. I don't know either. I, sometimes question? he's a caterpillar. Sometimes he's a moth. This is what's going to keep me up tonight. I think now. he's cooler as a caterpillar, personally. Um, uh, I, I I think so. What's the one though? What's the one we were talking about? That's like he looks like like he's made of wax and he's always kind of dripping. The face is kind of long. His face almost looks like the Morlock figure from Tomland, right? 
Remember we talked what, about what, this? What, uh, um... He's got kind of a melty face. Not is he the smog monster? Is that who I'm thinking of? It could be the smog monster, or it could yeah, I think it's the smog monster. Hedora. Put it this way: yeah. if you from looking at the smog monster and then hearing his name, it doesn't quite jive, right? Uh, well, it's an interpretation of what the smog monster would look like. <laughs> I guess I think I think it's Hedora you're thinking of. Okay, maybe maybe yeah. that sounds that sounds right. That sounds plausible. And then um, in '74, my favorite Godzilla vs. Mo- movie came out, which is Godzilla vs. Mechagodzilla, and it goes back to our conversation about interesting backstory and the fact that the, basically they started to rip off Planet of the Apes with this one. The, oh, really? uh, the aliens are gorillas who you know they change into gorillas. It's kind of cool and fun, and of course, Mechagodzilla is a great idea. Uh, Godzilla is joined by Anguilla and a uh, character that thankfully they never brought back named King Caesar, who's kind of like this goofy Pomeranian dog. Um, I don't remember that guy at all. But wait a second. was Mecha, So we had Mecha Godzilla. We had Mecha Kong. Yeah, Mecha Kong was only in King Kong Escapes, though. But was there another Mecha, or were those the only two uh, Mecha versions of... That's the only two I can think of right now. Okay. I mean, maybe... I didn't I didn't watch the 90s, a lot of the 90s Godzilla remakes. I did watch the Mecha Godzilla one, but I can't remember any more. And, of course, Mecha Godzilla was so big, they brought him back in 75 uh, for Terror of Mecha Godzilla. This is one of my least favorite Godzilla movies we already talked about in our least favorites episodes. I, I just I just kind of find it boring and tired, and I guess so did to- Japan because it, that was the last Godzilla movie for nine years. Wow! And then of course we get to 1984 with the return of Godzilla, where we're told none of that shit happened. I think wasn't that 85 though? It was it was released here as Godzilla in 1985. Godzilla. Okay. In that, okay. So it was, where they it was... added Raymond Burr again. That's right. <laughs> But it was. I mean, I remember that that launch. I remember that being a really big deal that that Godzilla was back in the theater, and it was called. I think it was called Godzilla 1985 or something. It like that. was, and it was actually um, really touted. I remember that Dr Pepper did a big ad campaign with it, and there's even a Dr Pepper machine in the scenes with Raymond Burr. Wow. And um, I don't think I think Raymond Burr, by the way, his character's name is Steve Martin. No, come on. Yeah, yeah. And, really? And yes, and because <laughs> who was Steve Martin in 1954? <laughs> so, no, right. They, they used the same name when he came back. Yeah, of course, yeah. And <laughs> um, so I don't think Godzilla 1985 was a big hit. I loved it. Uh, I haven't seen it since. But, you know, Godzilla's bad. They're using the nice updated special effects. I might have seen that in the theater now that you... Now that you mention it, I might have actually gone to the theater to see that. During this period, um, I was in the back of Starlog ordering every Godzilla model I could find because I, you know, I had a bit of disposable income and I could finally send away for things. And nice. I was, you know, I went right for Godzilla movies. I loved Godzilla stuff. Sure. And of course, VHS. They were starting to release them. I know Godzilla vs. Megalon was on every dollar release you could find. Um. But again, can I just ask, so when these things are happening and these things are coming out in Japan first still, yeah. are there – because again, I, I don't know enough, but like is there like a new range of, of, of uh, toy or vinyl figure or whatever? From what I understand, he is an evergreen and there's just Godzilla stuff in, in every toy store. So in other words, but, the, but the, if you look at even the stuff that NECA has been doing recently – it's very much like, oh, that looks like the Godzilla of like the mid '80s. That one looks like the classic one from the you know yeah. early '60s, whatever. But I mean, do, do they? Would people? Would would true Godzilla you know collectors oh, yeah. fans know Godzilla 1985 oh, yeah. versus Godzilla 1992 kind of thing? Absolutely, and and I'll tell you why. Um, it, it just goes into one of my favorite pieces. I own a lot of Godzilla stuff. When we reveal this. I discovered that I might have a slight obsession. Uh, <laughs> in 1984, 85, uh, Takara, they, in part of their Combat Man series, they made a, you know, it's like a G.I. Joe, and it looks like a Japanese uh, man. Oh, yeah. And I love you this. put the suit on him, the Godzilla suit. And I've got That's... one. I love it, 
and it comes with two different heads. It comes with the the more serious Godzilla head, and then the you know the softer ping pong ball eyes of the late sixties. And that's my favorite Godzilla, so that's the one I have on there. Now, now, but you just said something. You just oh, wasn't there also a Takara GI Joe like twelve inch style that that I remember that that's being what I'm in- talking about. Oh, I thought you were talking about the little Microman ones. No, the Microman ones came uh, later on. They came in about uh, the mid two thousands. Wait, so you have? Yeah, Combat Man, twelve inch GI Joe one in the in the suit. Yeah, I don't have it in the box. I just have it loose. But still, I remember that. That I think was one of the. Um, it's a small world. Yes. Type things. Yeah, it was and one or of those things we didn't know existed. <laughs> do you remember the the, the the other guy that would advertise in the toy shop called Toys and Stuff? Yes, I love that guy. He was out I think of his San name Bernardino. Was, I think his name was Mike Stanard, S-T-A-N-N-A-R-D, I think. I thought it was something else. He was British, but yeah, he... Yeah, he was Tony, wasn't it? Maybe it was. I don't know, but I I should try to... I should scan these or take photos. I, years and years and years ago, just like the It's a Small World thing, I would, I would save, because he would do a two-page... Yeah color ad in the middle of toy shop and i would pull those out and save them and i have about 10 or 12 of those i would love to see those i should i should dig those out and and photograph for you but i think that that takara joe was in one of those ads and it was just like it just seemed like something that i'll never even be in the same zip code with they're not that hard to find uh but you know even when i got mine i bought mine i think uh christmas ago Mm-hmm. I remember thinking, I stole this. You know, I didn't get it for a lot of money, and, mm-hmm. and um, I don't think I stole it at all. I think I, I just think they're 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 not that hard to find, but they are. You know, I'm still in that toy shop mind of everything is hard to get, even though you know I can press a button and go on Japanese auction sites now. Right. It's more that you can. Yeah. It's it's they're more obtainable now. There may be more money. Or still expensive or whatever, but they're more tangible now because we have so many more other you know outlets to find stuff. Yeah, you know than than ever before. And yet, and yet, I've still never come across. Oh, sorry. And yet, I've still never come across the Mattel Flash Gordon uh, toy gun, the pistol, the light up pistol. Yeah. Uh, in thirty five years, I've never or thirty years, never come across one uh, in the wild. Um, so okay, so where where are we at now with the movies? Well, the movies uh, came back uh, for in Japan at least, and I think they got home video release here, but we didn't see theatrical release for some time. Actually, um, you know, they did Godzilla vs. Biollante, King Ghidorah. They're basically remaking Godzilla vs. Mothra. Godzilla vs. Mechagodzilla, obviously. Um, Godzilla vs. Space Godzilla. <laughs> Godzilla vs. Destroyer. It wasn't until after the um, the disaster of the Americanization of Godzilla, which um, shouldn't have been called Godzilla, the, the, the Roland Emmerich film with Matthew Broderick. Oh, yes. If it was just called Dinosaurus, I think it would have been better received, but calling <laughs> it, even though I, I still don't think it's a very good movie, um, because isn't he like a lizard in that? Yeah, that's how it, that's like the opening cre- pre-credit thing, is like yeah. he's some kind of lizard that grows, and so, it's, a, she's, it's a female too, right? Yeah, and it's just... I hate Everyone it. knows Godzilla's a man. Yeah, and uh, well, yeah, and uh, they released Godzilla 2000 Millennium here uh, in theaters, and I, I was in. I, I that's the f- first time I ever saw a Godzilla movie in the theater. Okay, uh, that wasn't like a you know a review cinema type thing. Was I, I raced out to see Godzilla 2000? I don't think it was a giant hit, but it was a lot of fun to see it. And then the you know the rest of the movies I think went back to. Um, Went back to straight, you know, Blu-ray or DVD release here. Um, yeah, I'm not. Sh- I have to tell you, other than that, Godzilla '85, yeah. one that we just talked about, and maybe the odd sort of matinee on like a Saturday or Sunday kind of thing when I was a kid. I don't think. Um, I don't really recall seeing Godzilla stuff in the theaters. Like, I don't. I don't yeah. know. I mean, I'm sure it made its, it's way- festival stuff. Yeah, 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 totally. The last one produced was in 2004 called Godzilla Final Wars. 
I don't know anyone that has anything good to say about it or its director. So I've never okay. watched it. And, okay. uh, you know, I, I mean, I'm a little behind on all of my, you know, modern Godzilla films. I, I still <laughs> watch the old ones now and again. In right. fact, I just watched Monster Zero not too long ago. And um, But I guess the Japanese are at it again. In 2016, they are producing another Godzilla movie called <laughs> yeah! Shin Gojira. And I don't know anything about it other than its title. And, of course, we know that Legendary is really amping up stuff with a sequel to Godzilla, um, a sequel to King Kong, and then... Godzilla versus King Kong. By the time my kids are in college, which um, I'm well, really, I think really was, excited there, about. There's one called Skull Island, right? Yeah, that's going to be like a Kong sequel, where I so guess they're the going to explain he's yeah. the same size as Godzilla now. Now, now, um, <laughs> yeah. Now, but wait a second. You just said, oh, so did you did you enjoy the um, the one from a couple years ago? The- yeah, I, I did. I mean, I think. I think that the one thing that they did in their marketing that was a bit odd. Now I was still there, but whether whether he was in it or not, but they, the the commercials showed about as much uh, Brian Cranston as the film did. Right. And I did think that was a little bit of a, a bait and switch, so to speak. But the thing that really bugged me about it was he really was the best actor in the film. So a lot yeah, of gravitas he, just escaped. Well, you know, I dig uh, – what's his name? Well, see, that's the thing is I dig um, – what's his name? Who was in Batman Begins? Oh, oh. I love him. Ken, he played Rish. Ken uh, – Ken Watanabe, I think. Yeah, I'm thinking that's right. Um, Ken, Watan- Ken Watanabe, I think. And uh, Sally uh, Blah Blah, who were the two scientists. I like uh, them. Yeah, but they had nothing. They didn't. They had nothing they, to they do. They really didn't have. They didn't get anything to do. You're absolutely I, right. I think that he was that that it was cool to have him just for the connection to Japan, Japan. to say we've known about this creature. We called it this, 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 or whatever. That there was a history there. So it was kind of like a reboot, and yet still kind of acknowledging the history and all that. So that that I dug. I dug that, um, and I'll tell you the other thing I dug about that movie, and I'll explain why. Um, there's a film done by Tohu called Majin, Monster of Terror. It's very much mm-hmm. in that same Godzilla genre, but it's it's like a, a historical drama, and it's about a mm-hmm. giant statue that comes to life. And okay. there isn't. It's really well done. It's a long build up to you know. There's a warlord oppressing people, and then finally the statue comes and just sorts his shit out. Um, but the scariest part in that film, and it's actually scary. Even when I was a kid, I thought. It was, but as an adult, it's is there's a guy hiding from Majin. I mean, it's a giant, you know, statue running around stomping on his soldiers. Mm -hmm. And the guy's hiding in a house, and he looks out the window at it, and it turns and makes eye contact with him. And it's just like, wow, that's good. Like, it's really good. And then, of course, it... The, 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 he had ordered his warlords at one point to put a nail in the statue's forehead. Mm-hmm. So, so he picks the guy up and he pff, takes the nail and you know, um, <laughs> nice tacks him to the wall. But um, it's like the uh, it's like the rear window moment. Yeah, yeah. Like you're watching from across the street and you think, no, no one's. Well, I'm looking through binoculars. They're not looking at me. There was and then there, the that, person that, right at you. That twenty. Yeah, exactly. The 2014 Godzilla. They had a lot of that in it, where you know mm-hmm. the, the the threat wasn't uh, you know people running away from what was obviously just a, a projection. Mm-hmm. They, they you know the things were right beneath them or right. So they they did a lot of that, and I think they did that right. You could argue that they did too much of it, but um, I did kind of like that quality about it, and I did sort of. You know, eventually, though, I did want this guy just to reunite with his kid, you know. But was there, was there ever a sense, though, um, in the history of these things that the Toho or the makers, like, was, what, did it get to a point where they, they were very aware of the cheesiness or the silly factor? Oh, or the, absolutely. I'd, I'd of say the, the early 70s. That they, but that they, they, they played into it? They tried to make it more silly and more cheesy? Yeah, but that, there's wrestling it? moves in Megalon. Um, you know, there, I thought that was just part of how he. So that was played for laughs. Then oh, he's flying at one point. <laughs> yeah, I, did, I mean that was on the start of Mystery Science Theater. <laughs> well, yeah, but you know, 
It could just be his attack style. You know? Yeah, well, I, I can do the same attack style. <laughs> I'm sure you can. It's the Shatner drop kick. Um, <laughs> no, they're def- they definitely had an era of silliness and an era of cheapness. Uh, like like anything that's gone on this long, the Bond series, Doctor Who, you have low periods, right? You know yeah. where you go, Ugh, you know, and um, but the, but I mean, I'm saying it got to a point where it was almost kind of to to use this awful term, it's like kind of meta, where like they were aware they were aware of the cheesiness, and so they added you know more silliness in there just to. Just kind of, winking at the camera. Yeah, Absolutely. winking at the camera. Yeah, exactly. Yep. So there was that. They did actually go there sometimes. Absolutely did. Yep. Oh, interesting. Very yeah, interesting. Yeah, and and those are those are some of my favorites. They're also you know other people want to just pre- pretend they didn't happen. You know, right. that's that's just like anything else. People have their favorites. They say you know so, some people love the original 1954. It, it's great, but it's not my favorite because mm-hmm. I, I like. I like cheese, and, and you should know that. I, I I don't take things super seriously. And you I, like I, cheese on everything. Your, your I, I like hoagies, cheese on everything. Your hoagies, your yeah. soup. My, I do. Um, I actually don't like onions, but I order French onion soup all the time. Yeah, hold the onion, add the cheese, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. extra cheese. Oh yeah, I know. I know how you roll. Yeah, yeah. Um, okay, so book. where are we at? <laughs> so where are we at now with the? Uh, with Gojira, we got an updates. We know what's and so you you dug the new movie, but did you bother getting any of the new the new incarnation, like any toys of the new incarnation of uh, Gojira? Not a lick. Um, I was very tempted by the Jacks two fifty or sorry twenty four inch or whatever that was of oh. like the Shogun Warriors Godzilla. It was yeah. an amazing price. Um, I saw one in Canada at retail, and they didn't even have a shelf for it. They just put it on the floor in Toys R Us, and I was sitting there going, "Boy, this is my this is my one and only shot." But I have so much, um, and this is not bragging because I don't have a lot of space. But right. I have the Mattel Godzilla, I have the Popey Godzilla. I recently did get the um, the the uh, Toy Nami. Toyami has done this brilliant thing where they've taken the the original Mattel Godzilla and they've re-sculpted it to look more like Godzilla. Oh yeah, did you did you get I, that? I got one of those, but in the time that I ordered it, uh, pre-ordered it from Entertainment Earth, and, and the time it got here, I had picked up two Shogun Warriors and the Popey, and it's like, oh, that space I was going to put that new Godzilla toy. Now I can't even walk around. Yeah, and, and it was it was uh, when, it, when a, it, yeah, it's a big, it's, it's really big, big. and I, my wife kind of was like, well, "What are you five? You know, like <laughs> you get all these Godzillas." And you know, I, I, I joked with her. I said, "Hey, if there was a sandbox in this house, I'd be in it right now." Um, you but can it, always, if you got too much stuff, you can always send a couple of uh, things that are taking up space. It went to a out, very good home. Send them out west. I can just keep an eye on them for you. So make sure no one else gets them and they're treated right. I mean, come on. I, I know no one would love it more than you, but what am I doing here? I did. Yeah. I did pass it along to a good friend of mine who's uh, a bigger Godzilla fan than me. So fine, yeah. I get dibs on the next thing, whatever. Sure. It is, sure. Regardless of what it is, it'll be my uh, tax bill. Well, there you go. Yeah. Um, it's Canadian so, money though, so it's like sixty-five off for you. Yeah, it's like found money. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so there you go. There's our Godzilla episode. It took a while to get here, and uh, not our fault. Things happen. Glitches in the Matrix. Eddie's in the time. I still, I still feel bad because we really did lose a, a what? What I well now I'll over romanticize it. It was the greatest episode we ever did. It was the greatest, and and one of the greatest bits of audio recording ever in the yeah. history of audio, probably. Yeah. Yeah. I think Mar- Marconi is probably spinning in his grave right now. That uh, Jason sang wasn't... a version of Volari that just had tears in my eyes. But you know, we just can't repeat that. No, I had I, I couldn't do that, so I did Johnny Yuma yep. instead, which is not quite the same thing. But but so, we can um, still keep this conversation going on our Facebook page. We have yes, a Pod please. Stallions Facebook page. Come in, tell us what your favorite Godzilla is. Tell us what your least favorite Godzilla is. Tell us what we missed and what you'd like to see in the future, maybe. I, for one, would like to see more classic monsters. So whatever's going to happen 
with the new Gojira and Kong or whatever else. I want to see Rodan. I want to see Ghidra, uh, etc. Those Minya? kinds, of, those kinds of dudes. Minya. Enya, Minya, I, not Enya, not the same Enya, away lady. Cranberries, any any of those female singers from back then. The Basha, Basha, uh, Shade, any any of them really. Oh, I'm good. Oh, did you mean the monster? I did. Yes. Oh yes, yes, absolutely. But Godzilla's I mean, I'm not against. Son. If Enya wants to do something in the end credits, that's okay too. So, would you you would like to see what, what's your number one monster you'd like to see back? Oh, I want I want to see. Besides Godzilla, besides Kong, which we're already getting, I would want to see the three-headed uh, – the three G- Ghidra. Ghidra? Ghidra? Yeah, I'd want to see Ghidra. Popular choice, yeah. Or, or – but I know this is going to be way down the road. Somebody's got to bring Jet Jaguar back in some way, shape, or form. Yeah, I, I mean it's definitely not you know a Christopher Nolan type universe. But <laughs> no, but I, I love not everything that has to be has no, to be. Universe. I would really like to see a shift back to a little bit of silly, to be honest with you. Um, right. I think we're all too serious now. I know. This you has know? been it's been hard to keep a straight face Put during. Put those underpants back on Superman. We're all okay with it. Of how serious you are. Yeah. Um, well, I hope everybody learned something. I know I did, as usual. Uh, if you can find a more entertaining and educational pop culture podcast anywhere to down it. the dial, you go ahead and listen to it and, and don't ever what it that. is. And don't ever come back and tell us. Uh, but I hope you learned something and enjoyed it. Uh, we always do. And um, next time, we, you know, and throw some topics at us. We love getting suggestions too because God knows we're running out of material. That's right. Uh, we, we're out of ideas. Um, out of ideas officially. I just want to say um, good luck to Jason this month. He is off to England to do, I would say, dream work by <laughs> hosting the 35th anniversary a Flash Gordon Q and A. Yes, that's right. At uh, at BAFTA at on BAFTA. November twenty eighth. Um, it's going to be a great trip. Got lots of other things lined up and things to do and people to see and food to eat and all that. Uh, and then at the end of it, hopefully, if everything goes to plan and the planets keep lining up the way they are, yes, I will be moderating the Q and A at BAFTA thirty fifth anniversary of Flash Gordon with a good chunk of the cast and crew. And, uh, you know, whoever else wants to show up, it's going to be, it's something, it's still kind of pinching myself that this is actually happening, but it is actually happening. And, um, BAFTA, BAFTA has my name. They've got my name somewhere and it's going into a program. So I have to be there to do this. Right. So neat. And, uh, I've paid for a digital download, so I'm looking forward to it. Yeah, I hope I don't let you down. I hope I don't let everybody down in any way. Well, I will send you a list of complaints after I watch it. You know, Please do. Notes where you questions. could have improved. I, questions you know. to ask. And uh, I was going to open with um, – well, I'm glad everybody's here from Flash Gordon. It's terrific. Unfortunately, I thought this was a Rocky Horror reunion, and I haven't prepped for Flash Gordon at all. So talk amongst yourselves. But I am dressed as Frankenfurter. <laughs> yeah, we're also. I just for the record, if anybody is going, uh, you know, we're discouraging cosplay and and or um, you know such such things. No offense to any of it, but this is kind of a fancy pants affair. Ooh, okay. You don't you don't want to show up in a toga and everyone else is is dressed for a funeral. You really don't. Damn. Okay. Just saying. Yeah. But uh, like a man we'll- who said that from experience. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Thanks, everybody. Thanks, everybody. Have a good one. See you in 30 days. Bye.